because I think the the guys that uh, you know were the multi-sport athletes um, are, are definitely probably a little more more attractive and I think it's great that that kind of attention is getting some some attention in the media I think you heard with the NFL draft and and X amount of first rounders out of the you know played multi sports and there's a things going around on, on social media that are really highlighting that so I'm, I'm a, a big fan of, of playing multi sports that, that allows just that that general athletic development that again that only helps when you're talking about ability right so if you kind of unlock uh, ability and that builds confidence and then you just have a desire to, to play more and, and move more so Chris do you see that when, when you're looking at players does that come into play because now you hear from so many coaches at, at youth levels well you really need to concentrate on one sport you really need to do that and I, I think oftentimes it's for the detriment of the kid because they don't enjoy that one sport they're concentrating on so much yeah, I would echo a lot of what Matt said. I think the, you know, having that athleticism that you gain from playing multiple sports uh, is certainly something we look for. Actually, if you go back and look at our first round pick this year, Will Benson, who's a super athletic uh, outfielder, uh, also was a great basketball player, a great football player uh, that developed a lot of his skills and his athleticism. Some of the things that translate to the baseball field, he was actually able to develop some of those skills uh, through other sports, in his case, basketball and football. So I would echo what Matt said that I think you can, uh, there's been so much focus over the last 10 years on and, and some pressure to focus on just one sport year round that I think it could potentially be a detriment and that you lose actually some of your athleticism by just doing one thing over and over again. Carter, is there something you guys look for where, where you think, oh, wait a minute, he's also doing that. That's a good thing for us long term. Yeah, it's two interesting points that, that Matt and Chris brought up. Yeah, we definitely are looking for some of the athleticism that Matt talked about that, that playing multi sports helps out with. Um, it's interesting, you know, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword in a positive way for uh, playing multi-sports. One, you gain more athleticism, gain more fuel for your body, but two, you gain more experience with a team. One thing we find a lot and probably the, the most glaring example of is with our Latin American players, they are singularly focused on baseball from the time they are three years old. They don't play soccer, they're not playing basketball. They learn how to throw a ball as hard as they can. They learn how to swing a bat as hard as they can. They learn how to run in a straight line for 60 yards as fast as they can. And they get really, really good at that. And that helps them get signed. But as soon as they come into our system and have to play on a team and actually play baseball games, they are way behind guys from other countries or you know, from the states that have actually played baseball games. And so two things, one, we have to have them play a lot of baseball games. Two, we actually throw soccer balls out into the field and have our 16-year-old and 17-year-old Latin American players kick soccer balls around just to get their feet moving, just to get them moving their bodies in an athletic way. So it is 100% uh, in our minds, you know, something that is extremely beneficial, you know, playing multiple sports. At some point, you have to specialize, but it's not when you're 12. You know, it's not really when you're 15 or 16 either. It's later down the line when you don't have enough time to do those other things, but uh, there's just so many positive uh, different attributes that these multiple sports give, give players, and they definitely translate to being successful later on in their career. How's that soccer ball thing go over? <laughs> they, they actually really enjoy it. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's part of that environment of having fun. You know, if we, if we stuck to our guns and said, you know, hey, this is a baseball, we're going to practice, we're going to run, we're going to throw 60 feet, 90 feet, 120 feet, and then you're going to come in and you're going to go to sleep for nine hours and <laughs> eat your chicken breast and, and have a great day, you know, no one would enjoy, their, enjoy the environment. And it would be a really, really tough environment for guys to grow in. So, um, you know, just having some of those fun things is a huge part of it. If you go out here early um, before games, you'll watch pitchers. They'll be out there throwing the Frisbee or throwing a football. They're getting their work in. They're getting the sweat going. They're burning their calories. They're working cardiovascularly, but they're also having fun. So trying to find that balance is, is really, really important, whether you're working with kids or whether you're working with 35-year-old Major League Baseball players. And I think adding to that is it just gives the kids an opportunity to really miss playing the game, right? And I think mm -hmm. it sets up very well here with, with the seasons, but I think in other parts of the country when they are playing one sport, you're talking about burnout and – and I think hanging up the glove and, and putting the bat away and, and, and then pulling it back out in February, now you're, you're, you're pumped to grab that bat. And, 
And I think from a development process, you, Car, I, I know you probably remember, even because you pick up that bat again, it doesn't feel so light and it doesn't feel great. And you almost kind of have Never to. Never felt great. <laughs> <laughs> and you almost have to kind of reteach yourself. How did I, how did I, you know, how did I used to stand last summer? And so you're kind of going through that process internally. And then you get back with your coaches and, and again, another set of teammates. And, and, and you're, you know, you're really pumped to, to, get into everything we just talked about, the practice and the routines and, and all the hard work that goes into to, to improving.